Like Adidas, but Nike just do it. Down four and the fourth, we go for the win. Michael, two seconds, we taking it in. Buck Mike and Combs, you know what's going on. Man, now we're out the dark. No LA, we the big spark. No fourth and it just won't cut short. Got the best talking this all sports. Buzzing more than buzz beaters. We coming live all three speaks. Go. Go. You know that it's us when we talk about sports. That's Giving you facts on the field to the core. Uh, Tune in, we need the support. One hour too short, they'll listen some more. On all your station, not dropping no music. Starts like Adidas, but Nike just do it. Down four and the fourth, we go for the win. Michael, two seconds, we taking it in. Buff Mike and Combs, you know what's going on. Man, now we're out the dark, no LA, we the big spark. No fourth and inch, won't cut short. Got the best talk in this all sports. Buzzing more than buzz beaters. We coming live off through your speaks, go. And what is up, man? Our nation, Michael Buckasha here with the Man Hour. Sure to head over to manhourradio.com. Check out the blog section. And of course, check out the merchandise section as well. New merch is dropping each and every day over there. So get excited, have some fun, and enjoy some wearing some Man Hours. I got the original Man Hour 4th of July Memorial Day t shirt there. Got the sleeves cut off because show those guns, baby, right? Uh, yeah, I, I, don't, I, don't got, I don't got any guns anymore. So, guys, welcome back from the hiatus. I am, uh, <laughs> I'm kind of messing up right right now i forgot to sync my mouth with my audio so you guys bear with it it's going to be a little second delay i haven't really i I, i'm already off the game messed up the intro messed up the music but hey i got chat on the screen now if you guys head over to youtube.com forward slash man hour you get to see that oh let me uh i gotta put it up there right gotta put it right there where where oh are you kidding me? Now it's not even going to work. Sheesh. I try to be all fancy with stuff, guys, and it just, just doesn't work. It's so depressing sometimes. Where, uh, sheesh. Sheesh, Michael. Can you suck any more at life right now? <laughs> but anyway, guys, we are going to be breaking down the new and approved NFL schedule. We're going to start with the NFC South today. I am uh, pretty excited about that. We have not broken down the NFC South in a very, very long, long time. So that is, that's going to happen, right? So we got that. Uh, I don't even, I don't even know at this point. Like, is this my chat? (laughs) I don't even know anymore, guys. Sheesh. Anyway, guys, welcome back to Man Hour. Live, raw, uncut. At man hours underscore, underscore buck of the old Twitter machine is where you can find me. And if I get my notes, got the fan. Look, I got the fan blowing. Guys, I am just all types of despoiler right now. I'm crazy, man. Crazy, crazy, crazy. Let's start with the shock news, guys. Let's get it started. And of course. Brittany Grinder is back in the shocked news because why can we not go a day without talking about Brittany Grinder, right? She has appeared in front of the Russian court and they said, girl, you broke the law. So if you guys do not remember, let me, uh, let me refresh you here. Brittany was arrested in Russia for having illegal drugs on her. Marijuana, THC, whatever. In the heist of the Russian invasion of Ukraine. So with that being said, many people say, saying, hey, we know you do drugs. You, we know you do some THC. Don't take it to Russia. It's going to be stupid. It's going to be bad for you if you do this. What does she do? She tries to fly with marijuana and a little vape pen in Russia. Now... Let's not get it twisted. It is highly illegal to take drugs on an airplane in the United States. So what is she thinking that she can do to, uh, 
you know, uh, take it to Russia? <laughs> like, let's just be flat out honest. Like, you think because you are a NBA or WNBA superstar that you can take it to Russia? Like, uh, like what is wrong with you? Like, are, are you just plain stupid or just plain stupid? I'll take the latter. She is just plain stupid. But like I said, she has finally appeared in front of the court, in front of the Russian court, and the Russian court said, you know what, you broke the law. It is what it is. Sorry. Nothing we can do about it, right? But she has wrote a letter to President Biden say, bring me home, Biden. We have so many Americans here, and we, and we just, we just want to come home. We miss America. Um, isn't this the same Brittany Griner that was kneeling for the uh, anthem because, you know, of racial injustice and she hates America and yada, yada, yada? Now she's asking for our help to bring her home. That Britain Griner? Yeah, that's the same one. So the WNBA has made her or made her an honorable, on a, on a barrier or whatever, I can't say that word, an honorable all-star selection in the WNBA all-star game. Was it to bring publicity? Maybe. To put eyes on that product that just sucks? Was it to put eyes on her situation to bring her home? Maybe. Do I really care? No. Let's just be flat and honest about it. I don't care. She broke the law. She broke the law in a foreign country that is against the law in America. What makes her think it is okay? Let's just be flat and honest. What makes her think it is okay? As they say in Liar Liar, stop breaking the law, asshole! Are you ready for the best damn radio show on the planet? Men Hour Nation, rise up. I would like to personally welcome you to Man Hour at the dark. Say that thing. Why bring you the host, Mike, Buck, and Cone? You know what I'm talking about. I'm talking about sports talk and what you about to say right here. I second that. Go. Go to this house when we. Talking about sports, giving you facts on the field to the core. Uh, Tune in, we need the support. One hour too short, to listen some more. Oh no, your station not dropping no music. Stripes like Adidas, but Nike just do it. Then four on the fourth, we go for the win. Michael, two seconds, we taking it in. Buff Mike and Combs, you know what's going on. Man, now we're at the dark. No LA, we the big spark. No fourth and it just won't cut short. Got the best talk and it's all sports. Buzzing more than buzz beaters. We coming live all three speaks. Go. Like I said, guys, this is Man Hour. I am Michael Buck. You find me on the old Twitter machine at Man Hour underscore Buck. If you are watching us on YouTube.com forward slash Man Hour, I do got the chat up and looking at it. Uh, I put in an application here on OBS to try to get it popped on the screen. It was working perfect just the other day. But, you know, as soon as you push the go live button, nothing ever works correctly. Um, that's just the way it is, and that's the way it will always be. But I do have the uh, Facebook chat pulled up as well. I see 313, the flash over in the house. We will be over there, guys, starting next week. Uh, I'm going to hammer out some times. I'm going to speak with my man Mar Martez on the side here to figure out what time works for them. But we'll, we'll be over there five days a week. Your boy, Buck Nasty, over there, live, raw, and uncut, as always. Guys, if you don't know by now, I'm an unfiltered SOB, and I don't care what people think. Uh, so I'm going to say it like it is. And with that being said, it is time to start the infamous fact or crap. I do have a jingle lined up at some point here, but uh, like I said, I am off my game tonight and I'm not even going to front about it. So I don't even know where I put the jing jing jingle. But fact or crap is simple as that. We get on Twitter, we get on Facebook, we let you guys troll us and I troll right back and uh, you guys ask me these questions if these are fact or in fact that these are crap. So I have four questions here that are fact or crap that I have been battling back in people for weeks here. And uh, it's just, it is, it is time to get into it. So the first fact or crap of the day, if my record button starts working, there it is. The first fact or crap of the day, Micah Parsons says that him and Trayvon Diggs will be better than... Aaron Donald and Jalen Ramsey for the Rams. So as you guys know, Micah Parsons was a 
damn near lock for the rookie of the season or rookie of the year last season on the defensive side of the ball. Trayvon Diggs was the first uh, uh, defender ever to have double-digit interceptions where he finished with like 11 or 12. Hell, he was like the first five, six weeks of the game. He was on pace to have one or two every game. Like he was just a man on a mission. However, Trayvon Diggs gave up a lot of deep balls. This man got burned more than... Uh, Fez from that Saturday show. What does Kelso say? Burn. That's exactly what happened to Trayvon Diggs many, many, many times. But nobody did it get burned. He did get an interception, which, 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 which was great, right? But Micah Parsons, this guy was a freaking beast. Uh, I I don't have anything bad to say about Micah Parsons whatsoever. He he was just that freaking good, and I'm not even going to front about it one bit. However, on the flip side of the coin, Aaron Donald, arguably the best defensive player in our time. When I say arguably, because there is another player on the Pittsburgh Steelers by the name of T.J. Watt that has more sacks than Aaron Donald in the same number of years and time. But that's a debate for another day. We will get to that point. Jalen Ramsey, uh, pretty good. He, uh, he he was with the Jaguars and was amazing. Since then, you really kind of haven't heard from him because he has been on a, quote, stacked team, right, with the stacked D, D, defense. I'm, I'm trying to think of who he was at before the Rams because I feel like he went somewhere before the Rams and then went there. But – Fact or crap, Micah Parsons and Trayvon Diggs will be better in the long run than Aaron Donald and, J- and Jalen Ramsey. With all that being said, I am going to go with fact. That is going to be a fact because the simple fact of the matter is it doesn't matter who you put with Micah Parsons. You can put me, 35-year-old self that hasn't guarded a, a defender in seven years, right, and... I'm probably going to be pretty damn good because there's going to be so much freaking pressure on the quarterback. You don't know if Michael Parsons is going to drop back in coverage, rush the quarterback. Hell, you can put him on your number one freaking receiver, and he's going to lock him down. Michael Parsons is a beast. Trayvon Diggs is just a little seasoning on top of the hamburger. That hamburger is nice and done, a little bit of pink in the middle, just the way I like it with a little bit of crisp on the outside. Sprinkle that little sea salt, bada bing, bada boom. you got the best one-two punch in all of NFL. Now... Aaron Donald is kind of like that hamburger that has been out. It's still great, still nice to pink in the middle, nice and soft, a little bit of crisp on the outside, but it's been sitting out on the grill for a little while, so it's not quite as hot, right? It, it is not quite as hot. And same thing with Jalen Ramsey. He's not a bad corner. Do not take that and twist it up whatsoever. But the simple fact of the matter is they've been sitting out for a little while. These are the two exact same hamburgers off the same exact grill, This one just came off first, and then Micah Parsons and Trayvon Diggs came off second. Since they came off second, they're going to be better. They're nice and hot. They're going to melt my mouth. Bada bing, bada boom. Ooh, Cowboys going to the Super Bowl, baby. Micah Parsons is the dude. Trayvon Diggs is just the added seasoning on top. Aaron Donald is a dude. Jalen Ramsey is a dude. But they've already met their ceiling. So if their ceiling's right here, Micah Parsons and Trayvon Diggs is just a step below them, they got five, six, seven more years to extend that battle. Give it to me, baby. There is is no debate in my mind. Micah Parsons and Trayvon Diggs will have a better career than Aaron Donald and Jalen Ramsey. Now, the next fact or crap that we are going to talk about. Now, Miami Dolphins fans, I understand you guys are really, really excited about about your man, Tyreek Hill. I understand that Tua is looking great during OTAs and minicamp, right? Let me ask you this question. Is there pressure on the quarterback in OTAs or minicamp? Are they wearing shoulder pads? Are they wearing, I mean, they're out like they are wearing helmets. Are the helmets buckled up? So, when you guys start to troll us Kansas City fans, we don't care. I mean, let's just be honest. We don't care. We understand that you guys took our man Tyreek Hill, but you do realize that Tyreek Hill was only good because of Patrick Mahomes. 
or sorry, let me say elite. He was only elite because of Patrick Mahomes. Tyreek Hill will be a good for the Miami Dolphins, but he will not be a five, top five, maybe not even top 10 receiver with Tua. So with that being said, factor crap. Tua to Hill is the best duo in the NFL. Let me let me repeat that for you guys one more time. Tua to Hill is the best duo in the NFL, as in quarterback to receiver. Shut the fuck up. Shut up. That is complete crap. They haven't even played a single down in the NFL regular season. How can they be the best freaking duo ever? Not even in 2022. How can they be a best duo? (sighs) Listen, guys. I understand... This poll was probably made by a Miami Dolphins guy or probably by a Pats hater or a Pats fan, right? Just just to get the people going, right? Nobody knows what it means, but it's provocative. Like, I like, I get it. I used to have a show called Just for Clicks, right? I get it. You are getting people to click on your content. You're getting people to talk about your content. I get it. But this is complete ass night. This is 100% fucking stupid. Tua to Hill is not even a duo in the NFL. They haven't played a down in the NFL. When I think of best duos in the NFL, I think of Patrick Mahomes to Travis Kel- Kelsey. Is that a homer pick? 100%. I'm not going to front. 100%. How about this? Derek Carr to Darren Waller. I'm just going by tight ends here. I'm not, I'm not even throwing out receivers. How about Matthew Stafford to Cooper Cuff? I'm going to even take it one step further. Dak Prescott to CeeDee Lamb is a better duo than Tyree Kill. To or Tua to Tyree Kill. Why? Because they played together last year. Did Tua and Hill play together last year? No. They did not. I'm just... Don't shoot the messenger, but you cannot put them as a top level when they haven't even played a freaking NFL down. 100% crap. Do you guys understand that? When you guys put out these freaking posts that people haven't even played yet, 100%, 100% crap. Like... When you have Kenny Pickett in the top 15 quarterback in the NFL, he hasn't played a freaking down in the NFL. Are you guys just plain stupid or just plain stupid? Not to, like, take back from previous wording here, but you guys are being freaking stupid. Stop trying to troll us. Sheesh. Sheesh, sheesh, sheesh. Speaking of being trolled, as you guys know, Tom Brady retired for, what, a week or two? He's like, F these kids, I'm coming back to play NFL. So then he comes 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 back and decides to play some more football, right? So Mike Evans thought uh, that Tom Brady was totally trolling everybody, trolling the media when he announced his retirement. So factor crap, Mike Evans is right about Tom Brady trolling the media. See, this is kind of where like I Tom Brady. There are certain people out there that are master trolls. Tom Brady is by far probably the masterest troll ever. Ever since he has gone to Tampa Bay and he's been on TikTok and all that stuff, like, I'm like, man, this dude is freaking funny as hell. Like, he is a master troll. Now, let's flash back to when Tom Brady retired. Do you guys remember the man in the, man in the arena? It was coming out. It was getting some buzz. And then we, it kind of just, like, fell off. We're like, hey, like, where did, it, where, where did this go? Like, because they're like, hey, we're going to push back the last episode. We don't know what's we, we don't know what's know what's happening. Yada yada yada. Like, cool. Like, right? Like, whatever. Like, and then Tom Brady announces his retirement. Like, whoa, pause. What the f is going on here? Right. So, and then he comes back, and then the last episode comes out. Was Tom Brady just trying to get all the focus on that last episode? Like, oh. Did he announce his retirement in the last episode? Did he? Was he planning it the whole time? Was it going right off in the sunset? I mean, fact. <laughs> fact that Mike Evans is probably one hundred percent right. Tom Brady was definitely trolling them, trolling the media. <laughs> Excuse me. Let's just be flat and honest about it. When you have a production company and you are putting out your first production ever, and it is getting all this buzz and it starts to slowly fall off, right? It's starting to fall off, and you need a little bit of spaz to bring it back, right? Let's retire. (laughs) Let's retire. Let's get Tom Brady back in people's mouths. 
Let's start speaking that language, baby. Right? So, yeah, 100%. That, that is 100% fact. Yes, Tom Brady was trolling, trolling the media. Like, come on. You got... We know better than that. Tom, Tom Brady knows what he's doing. Knows what he's doing. Now, the next factor crap, the next one here. We all know that Deshaun Watson is going to probably get suspended for the rest of the season, or for the whole 2022 NFL season, right? Now... The Browns obviously knew something happened was going to happen when they signed the guy because they only signed him for a million dollars this season and two hundred twenty nine million dollars for the previous what for, for the next six or whatever it is right. So they obviously knew something was going to happen, but in the process they hurt Baker Mayfield's feelings. They picked up a backup quarterback by the name of Jacoby Brissett that we saw Joe, Jacoby Brissett get thrown in the mix in uh, uh, Indianapolis when Andrew Luck surprisingly retired like two weeks before the season right and then bada bing bada boom. Who is this Joe, Joe, Jacoby Percent guy? Well, he backed up Tom Brady. He led the Colts to a pretty good couple seasons there. He was a backup in Miami. So, obviously, he is a journeyman backup now. But he, but when I said this a couple years ago, when if Jacoby Percent is the quarterback for the, for, the, for the Indianapolis Colts, they're a playoff-bound team. But then they go out and pick up Carson Wentz. He gets traded to, to Miami. It, it's stupid, right? So, the factor of crap. With all that being said, Baker Mayfield is finally going to Seattle. Wow. That is – I've been saying Baker Mayfield to Seattle the whole time. And then uh, Pete Carroll came out and was like, you know what? We're not going to trade for a quarterback. Then I said, you know, they don't got to trade for a quarterback because the Browns are ultimately going to release Baker Mayfield in the end. So when it breaks down to it, factor crap Baker Mayfield to Seattle – that is going to be 100% fact. Baker Mayfield will be the starting quarterback in Seattle come week one. So the U.S. Open, you guys don't got to be trolling the Seattle fans anymore and say you got to watch Drew Locke for 17, 17 games because it's, it's just not going to happen. Baker Mayfield is going to be the quarterback in Seattle. Baker Mayfield is going to lead the Seattle Seahawks to at least an eight, nine win season. Later in the week, we'll break down the NFC West again with the new changes and whatnot because we're going to re- break down everything. Um, so, yeah, Baker Mayfield to Seattle, 100% fact. It is 100% fact. I mean, I've been saying it for months here. If, if you guys have been watching the Man Hour, you should know by now that a Man Hour underscore buck on the old Twitter, Twitter machine knows his shit. I, I might be the master troller. I, I, I control you guys all day and all night. It doesn't bother me one bit, but the truth comes down to it. I know what the F I'm talking about. Simba down now, baby. Next up. Switch over to the other camera here. Switch over to the other camera. This one is for all the Dallas Cowboys fans out there. Hashtag Dallas Cowboys Nation. Look at your boy, Dak Prescott. Ooh, look, got those abs, got the shoulders happening. Those still doesn't have a chest. I mean, maybe it could, could just, just be the angle. I mean, I feel like I, I got bigger man titties than, 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 than like Dak does. But Dak comes out and says that he is, a, he is the leanest he has ever been ever in his life. Let's just be honest. He looks pretty good. I'm not going to lie. I'm, I, I, I'm a straight male, got a beautiful wife, and, you know, but hey. If Dak Prescott asked, a, a guy would massage and complete that half the ending, right? No, I'm, I'm totally kidding. No, I'm not. But fact or crap, with Dak Prescott being in the best shape of his life is going to be great things for the Dallas Cowboys. It's going to be a great thing. I mean, of course it's going to be great things. Like every time somebody comes into camp looking lean, looking nice, we are talking about it. When somebody comes into camp we're looking a little overweight, Najee Harris, we're going to be talking about it. But the point of the matter is, is not how you look in July. It's how you look in November. It's how you look in December. How are you going to uh, you know, incorporate your leanness throughout the season? Because let's just be honest. Yes, the Dallas Cowboys do have one of the best offensive lines in the NFL. They had one of the best of offensive lines in the NFL. They're, they're getting old and injured, right? Now, 
Dak, maybe you should have kept on that little bit of chunk because you're probably going to take a beating this year. You are going to probably get hit a lot. However, however, this is the third year underneath Mike McCarty's system. What happened to Aaron Rodgers and Mike McCarty in their third year? Packers fans, I'll wait. Super Bowl? Did Mike McCarty and Green Bay Packers with Aaron Rodgers win the Super Bowl in the third year? I think yes. Are the Dallas Cowboys underneath Mike McCarty in his third year with Dak Prescott going to win the Super Bowl? Absolutely yes. So it's a 100% fact that the Dak is in the best shape of his life. means that the Dallas Cowboys are going back to the promised land, baby. I, I got my Chiefs hat on. I know. But I'm a passive Cowboys fan. I always root for the Cowboys. They're my NFC team. People say, oh, you can't have two teams. Shut, shut, shut the fuck up. I can have any teams I want. Chiefs are my main team. Cowboys are my second team. team. It, it is what it is. But when the Cowboys play the Kansas City Chiefs in this year's Super Bowl, I'm going to be rooting for the Kansas City Chiefs 100%. But my brain, my body is going to say that the Dallas Cowboys are going to win this Super Bowl because of Dak Prescott right here. Look at that man. He is chiseled out by a Greek god right there looking like a man among men. Gee. So 100% fact Dak Prescott coming into camp for the best of it, in the best shape of his life, the leanest he has ever been, is a big deal. Yes, it is. So fact, it is a big deal. Stop playing with us, baby. Stop playing. Moving on, moving on, moving on, moving on, guys. That is fact or crap. If you ever have a fact or crap, feel free to tweet at me at manhour underscore buck. I am on the old Twitter machine. I'm, oh, I'm, oh, I'm over there trolling. Slide into those DMs at me. Do whatever. If you have a question and have a fact or crap, just say, hey, like, what's up? Alpha Rob, my man, I see you. So, Alpha Rob, I'm trying this new chat feature to pop up on the, like, on the screen from YouTube, but for whatever reason, it's, it's not working. And I've been trying to F with it, and I just I don't know what the hell is going on, to be honest, honest with you. But where have I been, man? I've been on vacation. I've had my anniversary. Uh, I'm trying to get some house stuff done. And so every year around June and, Ju- June and July, myself and Combs kind of hit like that point in our personal lives where we just have so much going on that we just need a break. Like Combs is working 15, 16 hours like I like, like was a day. That, that, like that, 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 that's why he won't be on until August, September time when the NFL season starts. Um, I mean, football season was kicking up for me as well for like off season and mini camp and OTAs and all that stuff. Uh, so, uh, so every year, Alpha Rob, we take about a two week hiatus, basically from my anniversary till July till July Ju- July fourth, and then we come back with fire and pre- and prepare for the next NFL season. Granted, this is only like this is our second summer doing this. Uh, so, but this is the first year where I'm just like. Boom, this is the last day. Boom, this is the first day out. And that was my bad for not communicating that to the people. Uh, so, uh, and, it, and it wasn't that we just need a break. It's the fact that we were just so busy with personal life. T-ball, work, football, right, et cetera. And, you know, uh, dur- during the summer, it is my busy time at work as well. So from... I don't know, like June 5th till July 5th, like that month, we're shut down at work. So I'm working like 15, 16 hour days for system updates, new computers, all that stuff. So it's just like, it, like it just, it, I, I didn't want to give you guys a half ass show. Like if, like if, like, like if that makes sense. Now, I'm not saying every show is great here on the man hour. I, I'm not, I'm not saying that. But I'm saying I bring you the most energy that I can each and every day. Hopefully you guys get like a like a like a little bit of smile and and have a grand old time when you are part of the show here. So uh, Alpha Rob, I, I definitely missed being on the mic. And if you <laughs> were here a half hour ago, I fucked it up. I, I ain't going to front like I was so kaboggle like I don't even know what button to push. Uh, I'm trying out a new software and I forgot to sync the mouth and the, like in the video. So it's like a little bit off. It, it's, it's like, I mean, clap. So, I mean, we're looking like, like a full, almost a full half second off of the, like of the words and video, but I'll fix that before next time or hopefully next time I got the place painted nice and black. I got the led lights happening. I don't, I don't, where's the remote at? 
I don't even know where my remote's at. I'm so disboggled. Oh, here we go. There it is. I got my mess happening. Got the LED lights over there. Boom, baby. We got we got a bunch of different colors. We will, we will smooth it out. There we go. Look, at we got blue, all that good stuff. And also, guys, also, if you do not know, we have started NFL shows for each and every team. So if you guys are interested, starting tomorrow, I'll put the links in like in like in the description. But if you want to check out a Kansas City Chiefs show by the being by the boom, click on the Chiefs link. All our Kansas City Chiefs content is over on a YouTube page. Miami Dolphins, boom over there. Jets, boom over there. Uh, so who we got? Like we got the uh, like we got the Vikings, Packers, Bears, Chiefs, Steelers, Titans, uh, Bengals, Browns, Jets, Patriots, 49ers. I think that's it for right now. So like we so we have eleven teams right now. I am consistently reaching out to other people to bring you guys. Or and, and we've got the Detroit Lions as well. My man Luke G is hammering the Detroit Lions out. He was, he was probably on earlier today. Ah, like, like actually, but we uh, started a Man Hour Sports Network. Uh, so as you see, like the banner there is myself and Combs. Like I, I I need to fix that side. My wall wasn't big enough apparently. <laughs> so but yeah, uh, background looks good. Thanks out for all. Like I mean. Like a like a like a like a little bit of black paint and let your kids just have fun, makes it in for a great great time. So guys, it is time to get into some more NFL talk here. So we are going to be breaking down the NFC South tonight. Um, we are going to re break down every schedule where there's been a lot of changes. Deshaun Watson is no longer playing for the uh, Cleveland Browns. Baker Mayfield is probably going to end up in Seattle. Jimmy G is probably going to be out in San Francisco. So there are a lot of things happening. So we are going to re-break down the schedule, and uh, we're going to break it down until we get to the Super Bowl. That should take us up to preseason there. And then we got a lot of content to talk about during the preseason, like a lot as well. So man hour is geared to go, guys, here. We are ready for the NFL 2022 season. Lots of NFL talk coming. So let's go ahead and start breaking it down, guys. And we're going to start with the No Orleans Saints. Quarterback by the name of James Winston will be taking the helm this year. Drew Brees wanted to come, come back, but they're like, uh, sorry, man. I, I think we're going a different direction. Uh, so they do got a new head coach. They got, you know, a new offensive scheme, probably a new defensive scheme as well. We don't know what's going on with Michael Thomas. We do know Alvin Kamara will probably be suspended for six, 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 six games. So with all that being said, that takes us to week number one. They travel to Atlanta to take on the Falcons. So the Falcons are a great story. We don't know how bad they're going to be, but many people think they're going to be bad. They uh, picked up Marcus Mariota in the offseason. They traded Matt Ryan to the Indianapolis Colts. They picked up Desmond Ritter in the like of the draft. Um, what's her name? The receiver is suspended for the whole year for gambling $1,000 on their games. Uh, Kyle, so Kyle, Kyle Pitts is pretty much the only guy that they have. And, of course, Marcus Mariota. But either way, I am going to pick the Saints week one. Uh, even if the Saints don't have Alvin Kamara, don't have Michael Thomas, they still have too much defensive power. That defensive side of the ball is going to win them a lot of games this season. Let me adjust my computer. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, give me the Saints in week one. Week two, they're at home taking on the Bucks. The Bucks are just too damn good. The, the Bucks still have Tom Brady, they still have Mike Evans, they still have Chris God, Godwin. Yes, they lost Rojo. Yes, they lost Sue and a couple other people, but they still got Tom freaking Brady. Give me the Bucks week two. Week three, this is a game that I have circled. This is the game that I think is going to be a pivotal point for both the Panthers and the Saints. So if the Saints do not have Alvin Kamara, Back by week three, because it is rumored that he will be suspended for six, 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 six games. He will most likely miss this week three game versus the Carolina Panthers at Carolina. CMC should still be healthy by this point. Give us till week five, week six, and we'll, we'll, we will readdress that. But this this game is pivotal for the Saints, because if if they can win this big division game, I mean, you when you start to see he isn't off with three division games, and if you drop one and two, that kind of puts you behind the eight ball. So this is kind of a, like a must win game for the saints. However, with all that being said, I do like the Carolina Panthers this season. I do like the receiving core. I do like how they did their draft. Their defense is starting to come around. 
Sam Darnold is, is, might have a full second season. We don't know yet. But as of right now, as it stands, depending on who the quarterback is, I am taking the Carolina Panthers in this game. Now, if they do end up picking up Baker Mayfield, 100%, I'll take the, the, Car- the Car- Carolina Panthers. No doubt in my mind. But Sam Darnold at the helm for, Car- for Carolina, I'm picking him. But if Sam Darnold is not the quarterback, say it is, I, I don't even know who the backup is. Is it Cam still? Say, if it's anybody but Sam Darnold or Baker Mayfield, give me the Saints. But for right now, give me the Carolina Panthers in week three. Taking us to week four, Skull Nations comes into the big easy Vikings versus the Saints. Guys, our blog writers over there on manhourradio.com just dropped, was dropped a great article of the Minnesota Vikings about how, what their offense is going to look like. And after reading through that article, I'm like, wow. The Vikings might be the most slept on team in the NFL. I mean, I forgot what kind of offensive firepower that they have. And then they got a new offensive minded head coach that's probably going to, you know, ev- evolutionize that Vikings offense. Give me the Vikings week four. So right now, we got the Saints starting the season off one and three, and it's, it's just not looking good for, for, for them in one and two in, in the division. Then it comes to week five. This is a this is a this is another one. It's all it all depends on who the quarterback is in Seattle. Seattle Seahawks come to the Big Easy to take on the Saints. If it's Drew Locke, Saints win. If it's Geno Smith, Saints win. If it's Baker Mayfield, the Seahawks win. So this shows you how much stock and how much faith I have in Baker Mayfield. But as it stands right now, I'm going to pick the Saints to win this game. However. I do have Baker Mayfield going to Seattle. If that does happen, like I think it will, I'm going to flip this pick and pick Seattle. So for the time being, right now, I am going to pick the Saints to beat Seattle this week five matchup. But if Baker Mayfield comes to Seattle and is the starting quarterback, rewind the tape, I'm going to have to redo my pick and pick Seattle. But right now, we do have the Saints. They're giving them two and three on the season. Coming into week six, the Bengals coming to town for their third straight home game. Give me the Bengals. Joe Burrow is good. T. Higgins is good. Jamar Chase is good. That whole Cleveland Browns organization right now is looking up. And they, I wouldn't say they got that much better in the offseason, but they definitely did not get worse but they're still hands and feet better than than the Saints in this week six game. Week seven, the Saints travel to Arizona to take on the Cardinals on the Thursday night game. Give me the Cardinals. You guys know my stance here about the Thursday night games. The road team, when they switch time zones, they lose 70% of the time. So give me the the Arizona Cardinals, not because I'm in love with the Arizona Cardinals, F the Arizona Cardinals. I don't like them. I don't like Kyler Murray. I don't like uh, Cliff King, King, Kingsbury. I don't even like the maroon, red, and gold. It's, it's, it, is, it is ugly. I hate everything about Arizona Cardinals, but I am picking them to win in this game because sometimes you got to pick with your head and not at your heart. Week number eight, the Las Vegas Raiders come to the big, easy to take on the Saints. This game is very intriguing to me 100% because the Raiders are that team that they start freaking hot or freaking bad every year. And then by week eight, week week nine, they flip the switch and they're 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 the exact opposite. So this is a week eight matchup. This is the pivotal point of the Las Vegas Raiders season. Are they bad at this point or are they good? I don't remember their schedule off the top, top of my head, but I have a feeling that they're they're just gonna lay an egg versus the Saints. Derek Carr and Devontae Adams like at this time is going to wear down. Everybody's going to be like, oh, we'll just double-team Devontae Adams and Darren Waller. Yeah, you can nickel and dime us down on the field, but your defense sucks. So it is what it is, right? So give me the Saints in this one. I I like them. And this is this is kind of where I possibly start seeing a trend going up for the new for the New Orleans Saints. Right now they're three and five on the season going into week nine here. By week is still six weeks away. So they could get hot and still still make some noise. But the Baltimore Ravens come to town. Monday night game. Give me the Saints. The Baltimore Ravens are going to be bad this season. Six and eleven, six and twelve type of uh or they would they will have eleven to twelve losses this season with just, you know, I think their floor is four wins, and their ceiling is going to be seven or eight wins. But this Saints game is going to be one of the losses, especially on Monday night in the Big Easy. Watch out, baby. 
Week 10, New Orleans come off the Pits, uh, travel to Pittsburgh to take on the Pittsburgh Steelers. Give me the Steelers in this one. I do like the Steelers coming off the bye week. Most teams coming off the bye week, I'm 100% going to pick that team to win that game. Uh, healthy, nice game plan to you know work on the game plan. You have time just to sit back and relax and actually watch the game and listen to Tony Romo break it down, right? Like, it, the, the, I like the Steelers in this game. I do like the Steelers as a whole. The Steelers are going to be a very, very nice team this season and especially after listening to my man James Ross on the Pittsburgh Steelers YouTube channel right here on man our NFL talk hyphen Pittsburgh Steelers they got some promise of upside give me the Steelers week 11 Rams all day long I've got him gonna break that one down that is a Sunday night, Sunday night game week 12 Saints travel to San Francisco San Francisco is going to be bad with Trey Lance great with Jim Amy G we're looking like Jimmy G is going to be out of town, but give me the 49ers like at this point. Week 13, Monday night game, give me the Bucks. And what are we sitting at? We are sitting at freaking, uh, where, where are we at? Where are we at? We are at 4-9 and nine right now. So we are already at a losing season going into the bye week. Uh, Falcons are coming off the bye week as well. Give me the Saints come week 15. Falcons are just going to be bad. Browns with Jacoby Brissett, not going to be terrible. Uh, but they do slide a win over the Saints here the Saturday afternoon game. Week 17, they travel to Philly to take on the Eagles. Give me the Saints. I, I do like the Saints over the Eagles. The Eagles are going to be – people are saying the Eagles are going to be good. They're going to be really, really slapped on. I don't think so. I think the Eagles are who they think, think, think we are, and that's not a very good quarterback – or a very good team with a, not a very good quarterback. Week 18 – Panthers come to town to Saints. A pretty pretty much a game that doesn't matter anything for anything. Uh, we're best of the second stringers like at this point. CMC is hurt. Sam Darnold's out. Uh, we'll probably have an Ian Book play in this game. Michael Thomas and Alvin Kamara are sitting. Uh, so flip, flip, flip a coin at this point. Give me the home team. Give me, give me the uh, Saints. So I do have the Saints finishing the season 7-10, and 3-3 and in and, and, and the division. Definitely looks like they're going to miss the playoffs this season. But obviously, this is the first team that we're breaking down. So, the NFC South could be terrible. We don't know. The NFC as a whole could be terrible. We don't know. We could have a losing team slide into that seventh place spot here. So, guys, be sure to stay tuned all week as you break down the rest of the schedule. But, let's move on to the next team. Let me sick on my little bit of Mountain Dew. If you guys are liking this stuff, let me know. I mean, like, I mean, clearly, I like talking about each game and breaking it down. But I, but if you guys don't like it, let me know. I'll adjust my style. I'll adjust, it, especially people over there on fa- Facebook. You guys keep popping in, pop, pop, hopping out, give them a thumbs up, and say what's up. Stay around for a little while. Have some fun. Actually, come over to YouTube, youtubecom forward slash man hour. That's where the feel. I actually get to see the chat and interact with it. Anyways, moving on. Tampa Bay Buccaneers are the next team on the schedule breakdown. Week number one, they are coming back to Dallas to take on the Cowboys. We saw the epic, epic game between the Dallas Cowboys and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers last season, right? That game was in Tampa. This game is in Dallas Cowboys. AT&T Stadium. Tom Brady's back. Mike Evans back. Chris Godwin's back. The Dallas Cowboys kind of have a new look, right? Nice, mean, lean uh, Dak Prescott. Zeke Elliott's kind of like playing with that chip on his shoulder, trying to come back to his rookie self. No, Amari Cooper. So, CeeDee Lamb's going to step up. Uh, has to step up, I, sh- I sh- should should say. The other receivers are slipping my mind right, right now. Um, Michael Gallup, right? And uh, I don't know. It, 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 it doesn't matter. Well, it does matter because the Dallas Cowboys are going to upset the Tampa Bay Buccaneers week one. Guys, the Dallas Cowboys are going to be a damn good team. People say this every, every year, but the truth of the matter is the Dallas Cowboys are going to be a damn good team this year. We're looking at 12, 13 wins for the, for the, for the Dallas Cowboys and a Super Bowl prediction from myself. Spoiler alert, Thursday, no need to watch the show. Well, there is because I'm going to break down the rest of the Dallas Cowboys schedule, but they're going to the Super Bowl. Week number two, we already had the Bucks beating the Saints. Week number three, Green Bay Packers come to town to take on Tampa Bay Buccaneers. My man, Wyatt William, is an hour away from Tampa Bay right now. The biggest Packer fans I like, I like, I know, besides Tory, 
we're all going to be to be at that game. I'm pretty excited about it. But unfortunately, my guys, Aaron Rodgers versus Tom Brady. I think this is like only like second or third time they have ever played ever. I th- I, th- I think Tom Brady has the better of the matchup between the two. I, I'm scared about the Green Bay Packers. I think the Green Bay Packers are going to be a 500, maybe sub-500 team this season. They might sneak into the playoffs somehow, some, some way. But the Buccaneers beat them week three. Week number four. And the Bucs, they've got a pretty hard schedule. The Cowboys, Saints, Green Packers, and then the welcome the Kansas City Chiefs in the, in the town. Uh, I feel kind of ashamed. Let, let me take my Kansas City Chiefs half off right now. I'm, I'm totally kidding. Give me the Kansas City Chiefs week four, guys. The Kansas City Chiefs are going to be a team to not to fuck with this season. Justin Reed is going to lock down that defense. Patrick McCohomes is going to have that chip on his shoulder. Juju, McCole Hardman. Uh, I'm predicting Josh Gordon is going to make the team. Sky Moore. Yes, I know I'm going deep into the Kansas City Chiefs, but they're going to whoop down the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. For whatever reason, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers just kind of just forget to show up this game. The defense gets exposed with the running game with uh, um, with McKinnon and Rojo. Rojo's going to have a chip on his shoulder. Former Tampa Bay Buccaneer. Give Rojo the ball. Let him eat on that Tampa Bay defense all day long. We still got uh, Clyde Edwards-Hilaire, right? It, it, we are going, the Kansas City Chiefs are going to run the ball down the throats of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. This I, like, I know Bucks, Bucks fan, you're like, oh, wait, wait, shut, shut, shut the fuck up. Kansas City Chiefs going to whoop that ass this season week number four. Giving us week five matchup, Atlanta Falcons coming to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Man, three home games in a row. Give me the Bucs. The Falcons are, are just bad. There is no way to put this politely. The Falcons are going to be bad. You 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 might as well just start Marcus Mariota. Hopefully he gets you like week, week 12 and then bring in Desmond Ritter to get his feet wet to pop that cherry. Then maybe year, year two he can be a little bit more successful. Week number six. This is, this, this is going to be a great game. The Buccaneers travel to Pittsburgh to take on the Steelers. This is a very intriguing game to me. Steelers, I think, are going to be, going to be sneaky good. They're going to probably win the North. Tampa Bay Buccaneers, you guys lose that game as well. Wow, the Buccaneers are not looking good right now. Ladies, ladies and gentlemen, are like, are, like, are they? Where? What are they sitting at? They're sitting at 4-3 four and, four and three right now. In, uh, sorry, it would be 3-3. Three and three. But counting the week 13, we already like already picked. So they're sitting at 500 right now going into week 7. Going into Carolina. This is another intriguing game. For whatever reason, for whatever reason, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers do not play well against the Carolina Panthers. It's still early in the season. CMC is going to be healthy still. Maybe not. I mean, it's week 7. It's kind of iffy, right? Sam, If CMC is in there, Sam Donald's going to going to be good. Robbie is going to be good. Give me the Carolina Panthers in this game. I like the Car- I do like the Carolina Panthers to be sneaky good this season. Do they make the playoffs? I don't know yet. We will we'll determine that later in the like in the week. But giving them over the Buccaneers week number eight. The Ravens come into town Thursday night game. I mean, you guys already know my facts about Thursday night, but they're not switching time zones. They are not switching time zones. Baltimore is on the East Coast. Tampa Bay is on the East Coast time. But... Lamar Jackson is just trash. But Lamar Jackson is not trash in this game. You guys, this is the first time ever, so clip it, do whatever you want. Mark it down. July 5th, 8.57 p.m. East Coast time, live, raw, and uncut. Buck Nasty is saying Lamar Jackson is going to have a great game versus the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, giving the Tampa Bay Buccaneers a three-game losing streak going into week nine. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers are treading water at this point. They are a sinking ship. They're like, man, what do we do? What do we do? What do we do? Well, it doesn't get any easier because the L.A. Rams come into town. Newly acquired, biggest paid man, Cooper Cup. Matthew Stafford's looking hot again. And that, that, like, that defense is hot. I mean, they're getting better and better and better. The Rams already came in to Tampa Bay and whooped that ass last year on the route to the Super Bowl, right? And I think it happens again. I think the Rams come to Tampa Bay week nine to give the Tampa Bay, Tampa Bay Buccaneers a four-game losing streak. Like I said, they are hoping this week 11 bike week can just come a little bit faster. Week 10 comes up here. Tom Brady's like, man, why did I come back to be uh, four and, or three and six at this point going into week 10? What the hell is going on? 
do you guys remember when Tom Brady's first year at Tampa Bay? They were what, like three and three, four and four, and people are like, "Man, these guys are terrible." And then Tom Brady's like, "Hold my beer. Let me call these plays." Right? They beat the Seahawks week ten, going into the bye week. The bye week is one of the most worst bye weeks you could ever imagine. Tom Brady is chewing ass up and down the field. Uh, who's her coach? Uh, the black uh, black man. Um, can't even think of his name right 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 now off the top 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 of my head. Tom Brady is chewing his ass. He is yelling at Byron Lethwich. Mike Evans, you need to catch the damn ball. Get on the effing line, right? Tom Brady is taking this team underneath his wing and saying, "It is my time now. It is my time now." So week twelve. They traveled to Cleveland, and they whooped that ass. They beat it down 45-10 to 10 type of score. It is going to be nasty. It is going to be nasty, nasty, nasty. The Bucs are going to start on this tear. Week 13, they do beat the Saints on Monday Night Football and giving us a Week 14 matchup when they traveled to San Francisco to take on the 49ers. Wow. It, Tom Brady homecoming, whatever, right? He, he whooped that ass, too. Tom Brady puts up another 45 note on the San Francisco 49ers, making Joey Bosa and that defense look like asses. Three games in a row right off the bat. Week 15, back home, taking on the Bengals, giving another dub, giving us four wins in a row. Joe Burrow's like, whoa, ho, ho, ho. I thought I was a new upcoming GOAT. Tom Brady's still here, Joe Burrow. Tom Brady is still here, my man. He could be 48 years old, still whoop that 25-year-old ass. Don't you sweat it. Week 16, they travel to Arizona to take on the Cardinals. Give me the bucks again. Wow, hello, where did this come come from? Week 17, Panthers don't even stand a chance. Week 18 versus the Falcons, shh, don't even show up, Falcons. It's going to be a barn burner, and you are going to be the barn, and you're going to be burning. Given the Buccaneers 11-6 and six record to end the season 5-1 and one in the division. So, Bucks fans, do not sweat your slow start. Do not sweat the 3-6 and six start because you're not going to lose another game after the sixth loss because you are going to win out. From week 10 to week 18, bucks, 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 bucks. Love it, like it, clip it, do whatever you want. After that beat down by Lamar Jackson, after Matthew Stafford and Cooper Cuff and Aaron Donald eat you for lunch, you guys don't lose another game for the rest of the season. Regular season. Don't get too excited, boys. Don't get too excited. Moving on, moving on, moving on, moving on. We have been talking about these bad teams all episode long. Are the Carolina Panthers a bad team? Are they? We don't know. Week number one, very, very intriguing game. Baker Mayfield has been linked to the Carolina Panthers all offseason long. Obviously, Deshaun Watson was the guy there, suspended this year. Jacoby Brissett is probably going to be starting. Give me the Panthers week number one. It doesn't matter who the starting quarterback is for the Carolina Panthers. They don't have all that controversy crap happening. They're all not going to go to Cancun and get, and get massages on Deshaun Watson, right? That's, that's that. It, just, it is Panthers week one over the Browns. Week two, Panthers travel to the Giants. The Giants are a very intriguing team. They have gotten better in this offseason. However, their star running back that hasn't been healthy in three seasons, Shaquan Barkley, has been linked to a lot of trade rumors to the Kansas City Chiefs, to the Cleveland Browns. Uh, there was possibly some talks to the uh, Green Bay Packers hike as well. There are th- so is Shaquan Barkley going to come out and play with the chip on his shoulder? Because have you seen King Quad himself? Those things are like freaking man-sized babies popping out of the sides of his hip. Man, it is ridiculous how ripped this guy looks. So give me the Giants in this week two matchup. Week three, I do have the Panthers over the Saints. Week four, Arizona comes to Carolina, a West Coast to East Coast game. I don't know what time it is, but anytime this happens, it's not good for the West Coast team. Give me the East Coast team and the Carolina Panthers. Week 5, the Francisco 49ers traveled the West Coast to East Coast to take out the Panthers. Give me the Panthers like again. Guys, Panthers are starting off hot. 4-1 and one to start the season. Does this remind you of last season? When they, what, were they 5-1 and one or 6-1? and one? People are saying, oh, the last time this happened, they went to the Super Bowl. I don't think they won the rest of the game for the rest of the season. Did they? 
I don't know. But right now, they're 4-1 and one going to week six matchup when they travel to L.A. to take on the Rams. Hey, yeah, give me the Rams. Rams are going to be really, really good this year. If you bet against the Rams, you must have it in like an inside source, to be honest. The, the Rams are just that freaking good. Week seven, we do have the Panthers over the Buccaneers. Said that earlier here. Week number eight, I'm taking the Panthers over the Falcons. Like I said, the Falcons are just, are just going to be bad. Like, the, this could be a really good possibility that the Falcons go 0-17 this season. It is what it is. Week number nine, Panthers travel to Joe Burrow and the Cincinnati Bengals. The Bengals are, are going to be another good, good team. Now, the Panthers are going to be that sneaky good team. They are they can sneak up on a team that overlook them, but if a team prepares for them correctly, they are not going to be able to beat that team. And I think the uh, Cleveland Browns, or sorry, the Cincinnati Bengals, Zach Taylor and Joe Burrow and, and, and like all those boys, they are not at the level where they can start overlooking teams. They cannot put that W column, oh, this is the W, this is the W, this is a W. They are, they are still young. They're still very, very, very hungry. And they haven't had a taste of that humble pie yet. So with like with that being said, they're not going to overlook the Carolina Panthers. The Bengals are going to show up, and we can see uh, Jamar Chase with another five-touchdown game here. It's, just, it's going to be nasty. Week number 10, Falcons come to Carolina. Now, this is the part of the season where we don't know if CMC is going to be in there. Let's just be honest. CMC is an injury case, much like Shaquan Barkley is. We don't know if he's going to be in there. He is normally more injured than not. I believe a fact for Shaquan Barkley, he's played 15 games in three seasons. I did not look it up for CMC because, you know, that was not a show that I decided to do. Um, but I, I'm, I'm taking the Atlanta Falcons. I do not think they'll go 0-17 this season. I think they'll get a division win on the road versus the Carolina, Carolina Panthers. Giving us a Week 11 matchup when Carolina t- travels to Baltimore to take on the Lamar Jackson and the boys. Now, do you guys remember about 5, 10, 15 minutes ago when I said Lamar Jackson is going to have a great game versus the Tampa Bay Buccaneers? I'm going to slice him up, slice him, and dice him and all that good stuff. Lamar Jackson's going to probably have another good game versus the Carolina Panthers, unfortunately. A give me the Baltimore Ravens coming off a bye week to beat the Carol or to be, uh, to beat the Carolina Panthers at home. Give us a week 12 matchup right before the bye week for week 13. The Denver Broncos coming to Carolina to take on the Panthers. The Broncos are a team that we don't know how good they're going to be yet. Is Russell Wilson going to be the man? Many people have him as you know, a top 10 quarterback still. Hell, when this trade happened, people catapulted the Denver Broncos up to a top 10 team. They had a pretty good draft. Then they had some trouble in the offseason with Jerry Judy that got arrested for domestic violence. That was all dropped. He's back on the team. Cortland Southern's health like, 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 like healthy. The defense looks good. The Denver Broncos are a team that they, this pains me to say as a Chiefs fan, but the Broncos are going to probably be pretty good. They're going to be a very solid, solid team. And if you do not bring your A game, they're going to sneak up on you and beat you. So give me the Broncos in this game because I don't think the Carolina, the Carolina Panthers bring their A game. And they're just, they see that bye week and like, man, we really need a bye week at this point. Week 13 is the bye week. Week 14, they travel to the West Coast to take on the Seahawks. Now, if you guys know me, if you're following me on Twitter, which you should be at manhour underscore buck, you guys know that I nine times out of 10 take the team off of a bye week versus a team that doesn't have a bye week. However, this is the one out of 10 times. I'm taking the Seattle Seahawks week 14 at home, home of the 12th, 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 12th man. Baker Mayfield to DK Metcalf is going to be clicking. Tyler Lockett is going to eat. The Legion of Boom is going to be back with the one arm Shaq, 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 Shaq Barrett and like, and like all those boys. Seahawks are going to win this game. Week 15, give me the Steelers. I don't even break that down. They're just, the Steelers are going to be good. It is what it is. Week 16, the Detroit Lions come into Carolina to take on the Panthers. Give me the, the give me the Detroit Lions. This is a Saturday game. Uh, is Christmas on Sunday? Is, is, like, is that why we're not playing any Sunday games? I, I feel everybody's playing Saturday. Maybe it's New Year's. I, I don't know. But week 16, give me the uh, Lions over the Pan- Panthers. Then to break down the last two games are two losses versus the Buccaneers and versus the Saints. So that gives the Panthers a 6-11 season. Not terrible, but not great. So the question comes to mind here, 
Matt Rule is entering, what, his fourth season as a Carolina head coach, right? Or is it third year? I'm pretty sure it's the fourth year. I don't think he has had a winning season yet. He has had three different starting quarterbacks underneath his helm. Has not made a playoff, have not won the division, ha- hasn't really been competitive. Is Matt Rule out at the end of this season? Yes. After the 6-11 and 11 season from the Carolina Panthers, Matt Rule is out. Hell, it would not surprise me if week 13, Matt Rule does get fired. You know, losing four games in a, like in a row going into a bye week definitely fuels that fire. Um... So, yeah, Matt Rule was out at the end of this season. The Carolina Panthers go 6-11, and 11, and they missed the playoffs again. So, uh, Carolina Panthers fans, I know you guys were all excited about Matt Rule. He's going to change the culture, going to choose this, this, this. And he said, hold, 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 hold my beer. Let me fuck your hooker. That's, that's, that, that's what happened Moving on to the last team in the division. No pun intended because this team is going to be bad. This team's going to be real bad. And that's going to be the Atlanta Falcons. And the reason why they're going to be real bad is because they traded off Matt Ryan for Marcus Mariota. They drafted Desmond Ritter. They don't have a star receiver. They have a top five tied end, right? Yes, he did have like a 1,000 yards being a tied end and stuff, stuff like that. But you can only nickel and dime it down the field so much before you just start to suck. Um, there is no Tom Brady on this team. There is no Bill Belichick on this team. So with that being said, week one, we do have the Saints beating the Ares, uh, beating the Atlanta Falcons in Atlanta in the Mercedes-Benz Dome. It doesn't matter. The Saints are going to whoop that ass. Week number two, you travel to L.A. to take on the Rams. Is this even going to be competitive? No. You, you, you guys might as well just send the high school team just to get them on TV, maybe get some new jerseys or something. I don't, I, I don't know. This, this, this game is going to be nasty. Week number three, they travel back to the West Coast to take on Baker Mayfield and the Seattle Seahawks. Is, it, is, is that too soon to say Baker Mayfield and the Seattle Seahawks? It does sound really good rolling off the tongue. Give me the Seahawks. 0-3 oh, starts. Surprise, 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 right? Week number four. This is where you guys get your first win. Browns are, Browns are going to be bad. Spoiler alert, the Browns are going to be bad. They are going to be a team that is um, tanking all season long. This is a team that they knew their star quarterback was going to get suspended for the year. So let's just get Jacoby Brissett. Maybe he can get us two wins, make us look competitive. We're going to get the first overall pick and get a, I don't know, number one receiver or something. I don't know. Give me the Falcons at, like, like in this one. So right now, we are what? One and four going into week number six. Excuse me, sorry about that. Week number six, the San Francisco 49ers come into town. And the 49ers have the most West Coast to East Coast trips in just this NFC South division. That I, I, it's, it's crazy to me, right? But the 49ers beat the Falcons going to that West to East Coast matchup here. It doesn't matter what time they play. They can play at 8 o'clock in the morning. The 49ers are still going to win this game. Falcons travel to Cincinnati. Week number seven to take on Joe Burrow. And the Falcons, you guys remember when I broke down the um, Panthers, how I think the uh, Bengals are just not good enough to start to overlook look teams so they don't overlook the, the Falcons. Give me the uh, Bengals in this one. Week nine or week eight, do you have the Panthers being the Falcons? We just broke that down. Week number nine, Chargers coming off a of bye week traveling to Atlanta. Wow. Ugh. Like I said, nine out of ten times I'm going to pick the bye team. But give me give me Atlanta in this game, because I think the ego for the Sandy or for the uh, Los Angeles Chargers are 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 they're they're pretty high. They are picked to win the AFC West by most people. They're poised to make a Super Bowl run. They have the best AFC quarterback, wide receiver duo, and whatever. Give me the Fal- Falcons. Week number ten, I'm picking the Falcons over the, over the Panthers on that Thursday night game. Hello, two-game winning streak. What? Week 11? The Bears coming to town? Give me the Falcons again, baby. What? Three in a row? 
what has just happened? What happened is Desmond Ritter has come in and being the quarterback now for the Atlanta Falcons. They are rallying around their young rookie quarterback. They're playing off pure emotion at this point, giving them three wins. But week 12, they come crashing back down to reality, as Smash Mouth likes to say. Traveling to Washington, D.C., Arlington, Virginia. The commanders whoop that ass. Week 13, Steelers come, come into town, whoop that ass. Give us a week 14 by week. So right now, we're sitting at four wins. Not terrible. Not great. If you guys remember breaking down the Carolina Panthers, they only have six, six, six wins. So if we can win two of the last four, we can get out of the cellar, right? Well, week, week, week 15 is not going to be a win. They lose to the Saints. Week 16 is not going to be a win. They lose to the Ravens. Week 17, not going to be a win. They lose to the Cardinals. Week 18, not going to be a win. They lose to the Buccaneers. Finish the season 4-13, and 1-5 and five in the division. Not terrible considering, right? I, I've seen people pick, uh, picking 2-1-0 wins for the Atlanta Falcons. So for, for me to give them four wins, Atlanta Falcons fans, you guys should be on cloud nine right now. You should be living life. Loving it, right? Uh, da, 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 da. I'm loving it. But yeah, so the Atlanta Falcons give you guys uh, four wins this season, four and thirteen, one and five in the division. The highlight of the season, week nine, ten, eleven, when Desmond Ritter gets thrown again to the fire, and you guys get three wins in a row. Unfortunately, you you can only play off that rookie emotion for so long, and it wears off week twelve. So four and thirteen, not bad. You guys down your quarterback in Desmond Ritter next season. You know, pretty high draft pick. Your receiver comes, come, comes, comes back, barring he doesn't like to bet on soccer games or something or whatever he like he did. I'm totally kidding, or am I? I don't know. As long as Desmond Ritter doesn't get massages with happy endings and 57 ag- accusations later, you guys will be okay next year. This year is 4 and 13. So, to round it out, to round out here, I I think the NFC South is going to be a pretty much a terrible division. Now, the Bucs are going to carry the division. Tom Brady is used to carrying a division, right? So I, I do have the Bucs win division at 11-6, 5-1 in the, in, in the division. But then you got the Saints, Panthers, and Falcons with the 7-6 and 4 wins, respectively. So I got the Saints with 7-10 and 10 with 3-3 three and three in the division. The Panthers at 6-11, and 3-3 three and three in the division. The Falcons at 4-13, and 1-5 in the division. Now, I don't think any coaches will lose their job except for Matt Rule. I think Matt Rule will be fired during the bye week for the Carolina Panthers, which was was week 13, I believe it was. I do believe Matt Rule does get relieved of his duties. Week 13, Sam Darnold is probably out at that that point if he is even there to start, right? I I don't even know who the backup is. I probably should have looked that up, but whatever. I, I I, I, I digress on that, but... So, NFC South notes. I do have the Bucks winning winning the division. Currently, they're I think they're going to be like a two or three seed with the eleven wins here. Uh, we'll see how that pans out. Uh, breaking down the rest of the schedule throughout the week here. Uh, so, no other teams in the NFC South make the playoffs except for the Bucks. So, uh, Bucks fans get excited. You guys are going to start off rocky, just like you did your Super Bowl year, and then you got hot. You never lost that lost game. So is it poised to make another Super Bowl run? Um, if the Ho- if the Hollywood writers have it right, they're going to write Tom Brady winning off winning the Super Bowl after retiring and riding off into the sunset. Uh, but only time will tell. But getting into the chat here before I I head out, my man Alpha Rob says the Saints not going to be good this year. I agree with you, Alpha Rob. I think I think eight wins is their ceiling, but four wins is their floor. So right between that four to eight win mark, there's seven wins is right where I have them, and that's that's where I that's where I have them finishing seven and ten. Now, are the Saints bad because of Jameis Winston, the new or the new head coach? No, I think Jameis Winston will do fine. I think that new head coach will do fine. What is going to hurt them is missing Alvin Kamara for six six weeks. Michael Thomas, we don't even know if he's if he's going to be a Saint. He didn't play all last year because of all the controversy that was happening, right? Ever since he had his record-breaking year, he has not, he's been MIA since. So, 
that is what's going to hurt the Saints the most this year is all that inner turmoil. The Alvin Kamara thing, the Michael Thomas thing, and the fact that their defense just isn't very good either. Um, put that up with the, the Jameis Winston coming off the ACL injury with the new with the new head coach, with the new offensive system, his third one in three years, right? Uh, so, like, I, 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 I get it. Uh, so, only time will tell about the Saints, guys, but that is going to be it for tonight. I am up against the time. It is time to get to bed, time to get all things going, going. But, guys, I'll be back tomorrow. 8 p.m. East Coast time right here on YouTube.com forward slash man hour. I'll fix the words and the sound. We're at what? Half a second off, quarter second off. I'll, I'll get it fixed. Uh, I do have the on screen chat. I'll get, I'll, I'll get that working again. The intro will be better. So, guys, 8 p.m. East Coast time tomorrow. Buck Nasty, Man Hour Nation. We'll be back. Have a good night. But as always, as always, Man Hour Nation, rise up. My man Sizzle says, what about the AFC South? We're breaking down the AFC South tomorrow, Sizzle. Tune in tomorrow, 8 p.m. East Coast time right here on YouTube.com. AFC South. They're terrible too. Spoiler alert. Or are they?